Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ. Today, I'm here with two special guests from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Hello and welcome, Anand and Diederik. They're the organizers of a upcoming event, the Bowmat Bamboo, Dutch Bamboo event in, in Rotterdam. We're going to talk about five uh, main topics together. Um, really interesting. So any uh, uh, Dutch people uh, looking into bamboo, you should really go there, check this out um, in case you haven't already signed up or, and are going there. So just quickly, the top uh, five topics today, we're going to talk about the past experience of Anand and Diederik working with bamboo, obviously. <laughs> Second top main topic is um, the event, of course, Bowmet Bamboo, how it started, what was the motivation? Um, where are they getting all the energy to, to, to make this event? <laughs> Third is super interesting because both are engineers, as I understand. Um, structural engineering with bamboo and uh, in the European context. So um, using a, a, a material which doesn't yet grow there, but, but using it in Europe, super interesting. And fourth, the future of bamboo in Europe as building material. And fifth, um, experiences organizing this event. So again, Diederik and Anand, welcome to the show. Great having you here. So you guys um, have been um, working with Bamboo since how long? What's the what's your background here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I I started working with Bamboo back in 2012, 2013 but not as a, a structural engineer, but more hands-on. Oh. So I did a small internship with Aga Khan Foundation back in India. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an NGO where I work with local tribesmen in, in, in a region in India. And that's where I got introduced to bamboo. So making handicrafts and, and small, small things, hands-on carpentry with bamboo. And later on, at my institute, I, I did various elective courses where I again got more more exposed to building with bamboo with, with Sankalpa, who is going to be at the bamboo event mm -hmm. as an expert as well. Cool. And uh, yeah, I did a small internship in, in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, with an office called Bamboo. Mm -hmm. So all the small experiences, you know, like like nothing very big like very small hands-on things, which kind of got me into this thing. And uh, recently I have been involved a bit into engineering as well. But, but the whole thing started with hands-on stuff, like That's really awesome. being on the side and building with it. Awesome. It's, maybe it's atypical, right? Probably, uh, uh, but it's very cool, very cool. That's, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> and, and you, Diederik, what's your uh, background? Um, I always thought the material was interesting, but I only really got a chance to work uh, not with it like Anon, but on it as an engineer in uh, 2019. So we started the company a few years before, 2017. Uh, Francesco Versura was my first uh, employee. And Francesco had just come from Ecuador where he had worked on a project with uh, Guadua. And uh, so he had some experience. And um, we, I'd reached out before to Stephanie Chaltiel. She's an architect from uh, Mud Architects. And at the time, she was a researcher at IAC in Barcelona. And she was doing this crazy stuff with uh, drones that could spray earth and sand and rice fibers on, uh, yeah, on, on, uh, on, a, on molds, on a formwork. And uh, I had asked her to, like, if I could help her out for her next pavilion. And she reached out to me again uh, while Francesco had joined me because she had the opportunity to, to work on a few pavilions for the Salono de Mobile in Milan, the annual like uh, art fair in, in, uh, in Italy. And uh, she'd wanted to like, use her drones to spray an earth shell on a formwork with jute and bamboo, ultimately, as the frame. Yeah, so, cool. so yeah, so that was my first real work doing with Francesco, the design and engineering of a of a yeah three small bamboo pavilions, and it was a nice experience because the bamboo was sourced from uh, local camping grounds outside of Milan, 
and it was just growing as weeds and the camping owners wanted to get rid of it. So our team was able to, uh, to just source it for free. We could just cut yeah. it, take it. Beautiful. And so, Beautiful. We, had, so we had big local bamboos for yeah. free. Uh, wow. And it really showed to me that it, yes, it grows in Europe to large sizes and you can use it for structural purposes. Yeah. And this was with uh, Caña Viva who are from Spain and do amazing pavilions have done like these uh, structures for uh, yeah, decades now, I think with uh, Arundo Donax, the giant reed. And so mm -hmm. they, they work with reed and bamboo. And bamboo, mix. Yeah, so yeah. so we also had like skilled people who, who knew them, like this kind of material. So mm -hmm. I was kind of, kind of a, a blessed to have this first opportunity to, uh, to work with bamboo. Wow, so your very first um, um, bamboo experience was kind of already circular bamboo experience. So you, you tapped into the future. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> uh, awesome. That's that's always very interesting and enlightening to see what was the first touching point with bamboo um, because it, it shows that it's it, it varies a lot. It's it's hugely different and uh, it's possible anywhere. It's all about the open mindset, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so can, um, can I share one more experience, JJ? You have more? Yeah, just one more. <laughs> okay, please. <laughs> please. It's right after. I was in an office building in uh, in Rotterdam at the time. In the same building, there was also Lola Landscape arch uh, Architects. Mm -hmm. And Lola had designed together with uh, uh, Atelier Nomadic, also from Rotterdam. Those two architecture firms had designed a uh, 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 laminated bamboo dome for Cape Town. And this project was never realized, but it was serious at the time. And they were using glue laminated bamboo from Moso, which is a Dutch company. Mm -hmm. So this, 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 we did with an intern, Bapio Rote, we, we did the engine, like some engineering calculations on it. And that exposed me to the idea of uh, glue laminated bamboo and with two Rotterdam based architecture firms already working with it, interested in it and a Dutch company producing or at least supplying uh, laminated, uh, so engineered bamboo. So in a, quite a short time, I met different people in the Netherlands working somehow with it and both natural bamboo and engineered bamboo. Awesome. That's, uh, that's quite uh, already like a broad spectrum of, of bamboo construction you have there from the scratch, right? <laughs> yeah. That's a good start. That's a very good start. Absolutely, man. <laughs> so um, regarding the story behind uh, Boo Mad Bamboo, the Dutch bamboo event, um, how, how did it start? Uh, so you guys we're working more and more with bamboo and then you said like, oh, we should have an own event or what's the, how, how did it happen? Um, uh, yeah, so, so Anand had joined Summum by then and we had, uh, we had the opportunity to work on uh, some bamboo structures with uh, impossible projects from the Philippines, so mm -hmm. with good friends of mine. We've done some timber stuff. And they, they, they're really invested in the Philippines in, in trying to get a whole supply chain of, from plantation to construction of, 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 uh, of bamboo. And um, uh, yeah, so, so Anand and, and I, we, we shared our, like our interests and, and experiences with bamboo. And we, had, we were lucky to work on at least something, some stuff in the Philippines, but we, we were yeah, somewhat disappointed that there were no opportunities in our own uh, like countries or in the Netherlands. And uh, uh, we wanted to do something about it. Obviously, you can't just wish projects to be there. But we also thought, like, maybe what needs to happen is since we knew these other people in the Netherlands somehow making, producing, fabricating, selling, growing, or designing with bamboo, just not in the Netherlands, maybe we should bring them all together. So Anand and I looked at each other and said, like, maybe we should uh, apply for some funding to kickstart uh, some kind of networking events. That that's how Baum and Bamboo started. That's that's pretty pretty cool, really. Um, and, I, and I think it was around the same time two years ago, mm -hmm. maybe maybe in August or September, where we came up with this idea in 2022. And uh, yeah, it was right outside in the terrace. We were having lunch and and we were just talking about bamboo and. We thought, okay, let's apply for a funding and see how it goes. So uh, yeah. you you basically successfully applied for funding at uh, some uh, European or or uh, some or, uh, in in the Netherlands. What what's the 
because of course uh, uh, an event that costs money and uh, that's the the big uh, starting point right yeah it was the, the dutch creative industries fund it's a it's a national fund here in the netherlands with their head office in rotterdam also uh, mm -hmm. that uh, tries to support uh, the dutch design sector so any any kind of proposal could be an event could be an object could be some research could be anything as long as it supports Dutch designers or D Dutch based designers uh, and the sector as a whole, they, uh, they welcome those kind of, uh, those kind of ideas, those kind of plans. So yeah, we, we start, we started with a small, like starting grant, they call it mm -hmm. just explore the idea of an event, what would look like, what would cost. Mm -hmm. And we, we got that. Yeah, we applied with a project and the working title was Jumpstart, uh, Jumpstart Bamboo, because we really saw it as something that, that did, there's no network in the Netherlands, no trade organization. There's no, there's nothing formal. Mm -hmm. So whatever we did, the first event, we saw it as jumpstarting that kind mm -hmm. of, uh, exchange, uh, here. Awesome. So, I mean, this is pretty cool because I, I believe it, it really, um, enhances the the pioneering spirit of the the Netherlands, right? And uh, the innovations, which is like super key to uh, keep on track with uh, like things like bamboo construction and 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 that, right? Yeah, the the fund was uh, uh, very welcoming to the plan. They they had some minor suggestions. Well, one one big one was to just bring in more uh, uh, organizers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mentioned uh, Atelier Nomadic, so we, we invited them and then we also had uh, Walden Studio who do uh, bamboo workshops in Switzerland, I think, is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, in Switzerland every year and Maria Peels, an architect, an architect that I, I knew was also uh, designing, working or interested in bamboo. So uh, yeah, that started the four of us kept then, then we're able to do this and with, with, uh, with support from the Creative Industries Fund. They, they, they clearly liked it. So the, the idea, uh, I, people respond well to just this idea of this event here about this topic. And, and how, um, so how would you, would you, what's, what's your slogan right now? You have, I think 10, over 10, um, um, like organizations right now, which are going to be at the, at the event, right? Yeah. More, more than 10. I think there well, are, there, yeah, there are many. There are 22 speakers in total. Okay, 22 speakers. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and three different workshops. Okay. Yeah. And how how many how much time will it take? What's the setup there? What can you share with our audience here at Think Bamboo Podcast? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna be a three day event. Three day event. Starting okay. from uh, 19th of uh, June, so in around a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will end on 21st of June, so 19th, 20th, and 21st. So on 19th, we have uh, workshops. We have three workshops which will go parallel. Mm -hmm. First one is uh, model making with bamboo by uh, Olaf Bruin from Atelier Nomadic. Uh, second one is structural engineering with bamboo. It's a technical class also specifically meant for structural engineers because that way we felt it could make the most impact mm -hmm. and it's by uh, Sebastian Kamensky from Aero and uh, Luis Felipe Lopez from Base Bills in Philippines. And the quick question, so they're in the same time, so basically you have to choose one of the three workshops, yeah, right? you can only do one at a time. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to record them or, uh, or is it just like uh, no recordings for now? No, we don't have any recordings planned for now. Okay. Yeah. So whoever is yeah. making TikToks or, or, or uh, stri yeah. uh, recording, that will be it. Okay. Okay. And the language yeah. is, is it in Dutch or in English or how, how is that? Yeah. The whole event is in English. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So yeah. basically anybody from outside who, who understands English is very welcome to join the event too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the third workshop is by, uh, York Stam and Wing Met. Yeah. Uh, it's about construction with bamboo. Yeah. We all know probably everyone in the bamboo community knows the organ and, and, and the kind of things that he have designed and built. Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of once in a lifetime opportunity to to do a workshop with him in Europe, you know. Yeah, Otherwise that's true. Otherwise, you need to go to Colombia or or Southeast Asia or somewhere else. Yeah. So basically, your audience or your participants of the expo, 
can be like uh, uh, experienced bamboo or or people or uh, professionals or, or people who are new to bamboo. Both is like it's interesting for both, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah we're trying to speak to uh, to both uh, people who already invested in bamboo and certainly want to yes. grow this com this community or grow it wider. We want bamboo to be a a uh, mainstream material in construction that, that that it just goes along with with other materials. Um, we've invited like one sixth of the people to be students with a reduced fee. Cool. So we also want to mix uh, uh, juniors and seniors. Um, how much is the fee then? Sorry, Derek. How much is the fee? How much uh, less do the students pay? Now that you mentioned it, <laughs> uh, do you know off the top? I don't know. It's like yeah, how much reduction? So... It's like 50% lower or something. Okay, yeah, that's good. I think I think around 50%. Yeah. So uh, you yeah. really are investing in the in the next generation of bamboo builders. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's a ratio of 60-40. So I think uh, professionals pay 100, then uh, students pay 40%. Okay. And how? What's the value in euros if you want to share? Yeah, it's around uh, 100 euros for professionals. So okay. around 40 for for the students. Students, but that's the that's the late price. So we also had early bird price. Yeah, which was even cheaper. Okay, yeah. but that's over now. It's already in one yeah. week. So <laughs> yeah. cool. Okay, okay. I, I have to mention the venue. It's mm -hmm. quite special. So the, okay. the whole thing workshops on Wednesday and the lectures on uh, Thursday, Friday will take place in in a place called Blue City. Blue City is uh, well known in the Netherlands. So it's also in Rotterdam. It's at the River Maas. It overlooks it, uh, yeah. and it's a former former tropical swimming pool. So Ooh. this 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 swimming pool was uh, kind of went bankrupt in the early 2000s, I think, and it just was kind of empty. It was famous on YouTube for people uh, like breaking in and, and videotaping it. But then uh, I guess about 10 years ago, something like that, uh, a group of entrepreneurs was able to, 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 to take it over from the, from the, from the city mm -hmm. and turn it into a hub for circular enterprises. So the whole, this whole complex is filled with businesses that are trying to explore circular business models. Uh, can be anything from, from food to chemical industry, from uh, architecture. And then the, the, the main, what used to be the main swimming area is uh -huh. underneath a glass dome, and that's Ooh. the space where the workshops will be. So all this, uh, the model making and the pavilion with York will be underneath the the, the main dome. In and you can still see it was a swimming pool because it still has the tiling and the like rocky parts, and it still looks like it has different level elevations from the different uh, depths of, of uh, swimming cool. pools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's, it's a really interesting space and also very yeah. inspiring uh, complex if you look at the, the people who are working and, and housed there. Awesome. Uh, that sounds really very unique. Um, and you're gonna have uh, food there or, or drinks or. Uh, uh, how's the networking plan to be there? Um, yeah, so so on, on day one during the workshops, one of the organizers is gonna gonna prepare lunch for all the participants. Oh, nice! And uh, yeah, and for the other two days, we have a vegan lunch from Blue City, so from the restaurants inside Blue cool. City, so a vegan circular buffet cool. for everyone. Uh, cool. And there are also a couple of uh, interesting bars in the venue. Uh, so the the idea is that after the venue, you can you can go to the bar. Also during the venue, we're gonna ask them to keep it open so that you can always network and have a coffee or a beer out there. Oh, that sounds pretty cool to to get the uh, time to talk to people within the bamboo yeah. industry or other people starting yeah. in the bamboo industry there. Yeah. yeah, but we'll, we'll we'll keep everyone fed and hydrated so they they are at maximum efficiency in terms of networking and absorbing knowledge. Awesome, that's the yeah. best way to do it, Derek. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> very cool. And also the way we plan the symposium is that we always made sure that after an hour of uh, lecture, mm -hmm. so let's say two lectures, half an hour each, we always have a fifteen minute break, so that oh, people good. can always decompress a bit and then and they have. Then they have the maximum attention span. Yeah, that's good. Lectures. Yeah, because yeah. for some people, even if they're new to bamboo, it's like so much information. I think at at the at the beginning, it's like uh, 
learning a, a lot in a, like very short time uh, span and it's uh, i think that the pause yeah. will help <laughs> yeah. so apart from workshops and lectures we also have a really cool exhibition mm -hmm. so the the idea behind the exhibition is to gather all the dutch companies which are doing something with bamboo and then there are going to be a total 18 different uh, companies doing something in the field of architecture and construction. Mm -hmm. They would be exhibiting their, their models, their prototypes, yeah, wow. all, all their work during the exhibit. So and there is already the... a lot of people like organizations and, and businesses working mm -hmm. with Bamboo already. Exactly. In, in, wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't know about most of them before we started organizing the event. So a lot of them we we kind of uh, came to Discovered. know about during the process. Yeah, awesome. So I think awesome. it's also a nice nice way for all of them to you know kind of mm -hmm. uh, network with each other. Yeah, because that's one yeah. of the biggest uh, maybe challenges we have right now is everything is so new within the bamboo world. Um, like people are not yet connected. We have some organizations which are like active. But uh, there is still a lot of work, right, to improve that and improve the networking and the ideas and all that. But it's super interesting time to be here, and uh, I'm sure this event will be very uh, interesting. So far, what I've learned from you guys. <laughs> so that's the first day and the second day, right? Yeah, so the first day is the workshop, and the second two days is the exhibition and the symposium. Okay. The symposium is like you have uh, keynote speakers and... Uh, and uh, more drinks and uh, more lunch. <laughs> uh, I think the, we we are very happy to have some like very like big names in in bamboo, but but overall it's a quite uh, evenly spaced in terms of sessions. Uh, no one is particularly called a keynote speaker. Okay, so that's like a le level level playing field. Some some people are, have are established. Some people are, might be relatively unknown. What I'm mostly proud of. Is that that the whole event, uh, the way Anant and I attend, and then it's really a cross section of the, the the typical supply chain in construction. So we have people talking about cultivating bamboo in Europe, in um, in Portugal, and the Belgium, Netherlands. We have people who are uh, manufacturers who turn it into uh, engineered bamboos or or bamboo composites, mm -hmm. and we have designers, architects. With a natural and an engineered bamboo um, b close at home or further abroad, we have uh, engineers who calculate it. We have uh, people who build with it, contractors, uh, and this has, I think, also attracted the same like cross section of people. So when we we've seen their registrations come in, and these are also uh, people who call themselves uh, farmers or builders or designers. And we even have uh, people from the uh, from the Dutch national government, from the real estate uh, branch of the government, who are attending. We have uh, journalists from national TV attending. Wow! So, so we're yeah, we really we re really like it that it's not just let's say uh, architects and designers talking about architecture mm -hmm. and design. We also have that. We have all these people coming together talking about all these facets of bamboo, what you need from growing it all the way to implementing it. Awesome. I, I love that really that you have the entire value chain of bamboo, which is uh, important because lots of people see bamboo as or as a plant or as a construction. Forget that there is like a huge it's it's not just, oh, I'll pick the bamboo. It's already six meters and it's it's, <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> right. It, much less if it's yeah. uh, structured uh, bamboo or engineered bamboo. Um, it's a lot of work there. You have a lot of people working on different uh, things there. So um, that should help really to, to better understand and grasp the, the, how, how the bamboo uh, world functions. Um, I was wondering, you guys, you, you said you have um, some reporters coming also. Um, are you working with a hashtag for the event? Something like um, a unique hashtag for content? Mm, I think, uh, I think Aisha, Aisha from uh, Altino Medic is our... our, our our PR uh, Wonder Woman, and uh, I think she's been using hashtag Baumit Bamboo. Okay, <laughs> so that's uh, a hashtag. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. That's great. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, Instagram, I think, uh, maybe something else. But uh, yeah, the hashtag Baumit Bamboo. Yeah. You have the website, baumitbamboo.nl. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, just 
not forget that because that's kind of uh, important for, for the content later to, to find it again over whatever uh, platform. Um, wow, so this is super exciting and it's happening so soon. I, I hope to uh, publish this podcast within the next two, three days. So uh, any uh, people who haven't yet uh, got the word of this Dutch Bamboo event uh, will be able to maybe go all three days or, or, or one day, depending on how much time they have. Um, and um, sounds really exciting. I mean, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I would like to also mention uh, our sponsors. Yeah, so please. So apart from uh, Creative Industries Fund, we got uh, sponsorship from uh, Hilti Foundation. Mm -hmm. So Hilti Foundation has been doing some amazing work with bamboo in Philippines and also other parts of uh, Asia. Yeah. So they have, they are the goal sponsors for the event. And uh, and then we, we also have uh, support from sponsorship from World Bamboo Organization and Bamboo Logic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just wanted to mention these guys as well because uh, yeah, it's uh, it's help Sport. from a, from a lot of different places, you know. Yeah, uh, and I uh, I also heard you you're uh, working or um, Iraklis will also be there uh, from the European Bamboo Expo. That's cool. I yeah. mean, we have to work together. This is still a very small yeah. space, and I think it's it's the right way. So um, yeah. kudos there. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Iraklis has also been helping a lot. Uh, promoting the event and we also tried to, to promote European Bamboo Expo and uh, yeah really happy with how it has been and uh, also quite looking forward to see his talk at, the, at our event. Super, no it sounds sounds uh, quite interesting. I hope I'll be able to catch some things online um, when it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we uh, talk a little bit about the structural bamboo engineering? Sure. Yeah. So, um, um, how how do you think uh, Europe is going to use more structural bamboo engineering? Um, what is missing right now, beside uh, maybe uh, the, the the building permits and the like the ISO standards? Um, how do you guys see that as engineers working with bamboo, being in Europe? Um, what's your take here? Yeah. Um... So the ISO standards are interesting because what a lot of Dutch uh, architects and engineers didn't realize is that the Dutch Standardization uh, Institute, the NEN, NEN, actually adopted the ISO standards. So the, the ISO standards mm -hmm. for structural calculations in bamboo have been adopted mm -hmm. and they're, they're legal in awesome. the Netherlands, meaning you could, you could apply for a building permit with a, either a natural bamboo or an engineered bamboo uh, structure. And, and, and just submit structural calculations. So that, that's very encouraging, though it's been very unusual to me that, that this went completely under the radar. There's no news about it. Every person I talk to seems to have not heard of it. I, I, I keep sharing this news I have been for the last two years, but it, it's been around. And I think that's, an, that's a big, big step towards uh, using more of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, I, uh, what I'm thinking of in the Netherlands at least, and it could be the same for our, our European neighbors is that just making the the material more known and using engineered bamboo as a as a as a stepping stone is is an important precursor. A few years ago, there was a television show in the Netherlands called uh, Tegelicht, their investigative uh, program. They did one episode on uh, mass timber and the the coming timber revolution. This episode suddenly pointed everybody's attention in the Dutch uh, construction industry to mass timber, so CLT, for example. Yeah. And since then, people have spoken about a timber revolution, and you see lots of lots of uh, mass timber uh, buildings and high rises in the Netherlands, where five years ago this was unthinkable. And I'm hoping that bamboo, maybe through our event, maybe with an upcoming episode of the same show in October 6th, Mm -hmm. They will dedicate another episode now to uh, partially to bamboo. Uh, cool, Those cool. are the journalists that are coming to the event. They're doing some yeah. like uh, research, like advanced. Uh, mm -hmm. They are already looking uh, ahead uh, to prepare for their episode. I'm hoping it will have a similar effect that suddenly through our event and subsequently the TV show, people in the Netherlands will suddenly know about bamboo as a serious building material mm -hmm. and then consider it. 
I've seen signs that this will this, this is already happening a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that a few years from now, it won't be unusual to see a construction site where, where bamboo is being used here. Wow, that, that would be right now quite uh, impressive because probably right now there is not enough bamboo around for all those future bamboo constructions, right? Well, I, so the silver sponsor that Anand mentioned, Bamboo Logic, it, that's that's a super like important uh, Dutch company. It's uh, based in Nijmegen. Uh, we, we've known them for a few years now. They're doing extremely well. They're getting a lot of interest and investment to support their their, their plantations in in in, uh, uh, in Portugal, and, and I think they're also working in in, in Belgium and and probably in Netherlands soon. So yeah, since bamboo is so fast growing, it's very imaginable that, that, that they can, they already have their first crops, but um, but that, yeah, in the coming years, their, their volume of, of locally grown bamboo is just gonna, yeah, uh, keep up with uh, with the rising demand that I expect. Uh, I think they have to happen. scale massively from the numbers I, I got from Bamboo Logic. Uh, it seems they're, they're gonna have to plant massive more amounts and it's good because they they're getting funding they're they're advancing so it's it's going to happen but right now it's mm -hmm. like a mind uh, mind uh, blowing that uh, uh, this is going to happen because uh, of course uh, we're not yet there but uh, hey absolutely very uh, interesting and yeah if if uh, the journalists can can like uh, really uh, dig well there and, and and get a good understanding of uh, how the the impact of bamboo uh, does a, a net positive impact at the end, not only on the environment, uh, but also on, on the constructions and um, compared to uh, uh, like the normal materials, which are steel, glass, and basically, um, and let's say wood, right? Which is uh, organic, but still uh, kind of uh, has, has its challenges too, of course, right? And, and bamboo on the other hand is, is like, is, you're using grass. I mean, what's more regenerating than, than grass uh, compared to any other material, right? Um, also regarding glass, um, interesting, you guys know that, but it's, it's all sand basically. So they need huge amounts of sand to, to use that glass for all those skyscrapers. Um, so um, yeah, if you can use more bamboo, absolutely. Absolutely better future ahead. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, super, super. This is really uh, highly exciting, and um, and yeah, it's the way it has to be. Uh, yeah. I have to talk uh, about. We have to explain it. <laughs> yeah, Nan, please. Yeah. Yeah. And on day two, we have a lecture from uh, Susan Lucas from yeah. World oh. Bamboo Organization. Yep. And the lecture is specifically meant for uh, how how you can grow structurally useful bamboo in Europe, what are mm. the ways or, or methods to do it or what's the way ahead, you know? Yeah. So, so looking at the European context and how you can go speak, grow species, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not guadua and, and asper, but yeah. maybe other species which, which you can, you know, yeah. still grow and use it somehow. I think there's lots of uh, philostaches and stuff like that in uh, growing well in Europe with the climate right now who knows in 10 years if it's uh, five degrees warmer <laughs> it's another story but uh yeah <laughs> no but bamboo adapts super well to most climates so that's really another uh, amazing thing of bamboo i mean you can you can plant it in, in terrible soil uh it will mostly grow um of course if the soil is super good it'll grow better but still uh, it's super adaptable plant uh, this is uh, another thing a lot of people miss and think oh uh it has to be good soil and all that. No, it actually it grows anywhere, <laughs> almost. Yeah. yeah, this is the message we're trying to get out. I think uh, a big thing that's that's holding bamboo back here is just the uh, that the people are unfamiliar. They think it has to come from far away, from from China, for instance. That uh, that it doesn't grow in in Europe. And and I think uh, there's also a big role for designers and architects here because. Uh, when people here think about uh, uh, the average person thinks about bamboo, they might have connotations of of, uh, of some kind of uh, nat natural bamboo resort type thing in, in Southeast Asia, and they can't really 
they can't really imagine a Dutch or European architecture yeah. with that material. So I think there's a big challenge for designers and architects to show what would European bamboo architecture look like. I think that's an exciting opportunity. And it's, it's hoping, uh, hoping that our event can contribute uh, to people's thinking about it and exploring that potential. It's it's a total pioneering thing there because as as you said it, it will be like for the future generations the new standard of of European bamboo construction not like the Latin American or the Asian but like totally own uh, needs and the uh, cultural um, background um, adapted to um, and and with this new material which again also uh, imposes that uh, you don't have to build like you built before you build totally different. Or you can build totally different with bamboo compared to steel, uh, cement, uh, whatever uh, classic uh, construction material you use, right? Yeah. And um, so, your what has your experience been so far organizing this event? Yeah, I mean, pretty pretty cool. I mean, meeting a lot of interesting people. Uh, okay. Yeah, like I said before, came to know about a lot of architects, designers working in the field of bamboo, which, which I wasn't aware of uh, in, in Netherlands. Also, also internationally, I, I came to know about a lot of interesting people, and uh, it was fun so far gathering this uh, whole team of speakers speaking during the event and then uh, setting up the exhibit. So, and basically, it's very it's, exciting. It's, it's you and Ant and Diederik, you're the main uh, organization, like, like uh, you organize it and you have like two, three other people also uh, organizing the event, right? Total of six people or something like that? Yeah, so, so we all are co-organizers, so, okay. so we initiated the event and <laughs> yeah. then we, we joined the, the, then it was more like a teamwork, so, nice. so we have been, some of us is, is more in charge of the project management. Mm -hmm. Then Atelier Nomadic, uh, so Olaf, Groen, Aisha, and Mark, they have been involved in the, in the publicity uh, a bit with the workshop, uh, the workshop by York. Sebastian from uh, Walden Studio has been helping a lot with the venue, so, so managing the, coordinating with the venue, so the staff over there, etc. And then Maria from uh, Amsterdam, uh, architect. Uh, she has been responsible for all the flights and the hotel bookings for all the guests, etc. Et wow! So, so it's really a teamwork, and uh, also, also really, really happy that we formed this team, and we're very, very lucky in that way. Yeah. So, so An Anand is selling himself a little short here because he's the like the main coordinator, and he's been. Uh, He's been trying to to like coordinate this ragtag team of bamboo enthusiasts. Uh, so uh, so Anand has, has put in a lot of time um, and uh, a lot of hours into uh, into the event in the past past year. Uh, but it's it is it is a group it effort. Is. Yeah. And it's been nice because um, uh, Walden Studio and Atelier Medic they're both in Rotterdam. Uh, they're kind of at cycling distance, and we like to take our bike here in the Netherlands. <laughs> Beautiful. So we've we've been every every few weeks we have a fixed meeting and we we uh, go to each other's offices and and that's also been a nice nice bonus experience from starting this event. I think in general what I've really uh, enjoyed seeing is what in Dutch we call it the gun factor. It's like a is that everybody wants you to succeed. They once they hear what you're trying to do, they they wish you well. They try to help however they can. Everybody just likes the idea of, of, uh, of this event happening. So that, that's been really good. It's been very well received. Awesome. So I also see you have a lot of professional organization there. I think this is key to uh, success and uh, a lot of uh, passionate people uh, uh, like embedded in the event, like Anand and yourself, Diderik. So I think this is another uh, key element, uh, really. Um, and uh, super exciting, I think. Uh, yeah, guys, it's it's uh, happening very soon. So I don't know. Um, do you have any closing words, maybe, um, for the listeners? Yeah, whatever your plans are, uh, cancel them and come to Bamboo. <laughs> Bamboo. Yeah. yeah, very good. <laughs> and then, yeah, I will say the same. I hope, <laughs> hope to see as many people as possible there. Awesome, awesome. Well.
Guys, um, I really appreciate your time sharing all this info about the, the upcoming Dutch Bamboo event um, in, uh, what is it, one week, the 19th. So really very, yeah, uh, we'll like eight days, eight days. Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure it will be um, fantastic. And um, let's stay in contact. Um, I'll upload this on the Think Bamboo YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, of course. <laughs> and we'll be also on LinkedIn and TikTok and the website Think Bamboo. So we really want to yeah. kick that um, message out there, have everybody on board. Um, thanks a lot again. And um, take care, guys. Yeah, thanks, yeah, for thanks a lot, thank you, JJ, for doing this. <laughs> really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Cool.